My name is Elu Yemi Orija. I am a legal practitioner and I'm the executive director of Headfort Foundation. Headfort Foundation is a non-profit organization and what we do basically is to provide access to justice to vulnerable members of the Nigerian society and we also advocate for human rights and use innovative technology to solve the issues in our justice system. We've been doing this since 2019 and myself and my team are happy to have bridged the gap for over 600 persons um, in the area of justice. Okay, do I really want to be a lawyer? Well, actually, since a very long time ago, I'll say since the age of 12, I've wanted to be a lawyer. And this uh, was inspired by an inc incident that happened in my village. I'm from Ikiti State, Nigeria, uh, to be precise, Omwe Ikiti. And sometimes in 2000, an incident happened in my village where a lot of breadwinners were arrested uh, because they had farms close to a, a scene of crime. And they were all picked up, you know, randomly as police with arrest in Nigeria. And a lot of them were in prison for over two years. And they were there without lawyers because they couldn't afford one. And unfortunately, a friend of mine, her father was also among these about 30 breadwinners. And I was asking my father at the time, why is it that nobody is standing up to go represent these people in court? Then my dad would say, uh, they, need they need money to contract the services of lawyers. They didn't have money. And I'm like, okay, how about in our community, don't we have any lawyer that could you know, um, um, represent these people? Then at the time, there was really nobody they could run to. And because they couldn't access lawyers, this also contributed to their prolonged detention. Then I told my dad I would love to be a lawyer someday. Then he said, then you need to read hard because lawyers always read. My own dad wasn't a lawyer, but he was quite educated. And um, he was a chief in my village at the same time. And I would see him administer some of minor, minor uh, disputes in my community. As a chief, he would um, sit on this uh, dispute and solve them. Then all of this inspired me to like, I really want to be a lawyer. And importantly, I want to help people who are not able to afford legal representation. Okay, so I think I need to put this into perspective. What I do at my organization is, at Edford Chambers, which is a for-profit organization, um, we do general legal practice because we have other lawyers who are specialized in other areas of law and they're able to render all forms of legal services, ranging from different, different uh, parts of legal practice. And this started in 2015. So 2015, starting uh, the organization helped me to kind of get resources to start the nonprofit. So the nonprofit is called Headford Foundation, and that started in 2019. Um, and what I do, basically, they are, that is where my passion is, actually, is providing legal services for people who cannot afford one. There are lots of Nigerians um, in, in, encountering the legal system, starting from the police station to the courts, to the prison, and they really do not know how to navigate this process. A lot of them even have money, but they are being extorted by some people, you know, also in the legal, uh, legal industry, I'll say. So at the end of the day, it is important to have somebody who is going to channel that journey with you. And that's what we do at Headford Foundation. From the very start of your situation at the police station, if you have one, we are there to create and help you, guide you through the process and make it seamless for you. And at the end of the day, ensure that justice is actually served. Okay, so the idea of Headford Foundation has always been there since I was 12. But the truth is, I really do not know how to navigate it. I don't know what exactly it was because, of course, I had less knowledge, less experience. But the very incident that eventually made me say this is the time to Beth Headford Foundation was in 2018. And at the time, I was in a court at a, the magistrate court in Igboshere, Lagos State. And on this day, I was there for my business, like something entirely different. But in the courtroom was a young man that was about to be arraigned in court. Arraigned for breaking crates of eggs. At the time, worth less than 5,000 naira. Crates of eggs. These crates of eggs belonged to a complainant who is a noodle seller by the roadside. 
And out of anger, the suspect or the defendant, you know, had a fight with somebody else while they were waiting to get their noodles from this woman. And in the course of that fight, the crate of eggs right there got broken. Then the matter was reported to the police. Unfortunately, this man doesn't have money to pay for that crate of eggs. And then he was charged to court. And I was in court doing something entirely different. When the court said, I mean, like the court was about to remand him in prison, grant him bail, but remand him in prison until he's able to perfect his bail conditions. Right there, I stood up in the court and I'm, I was like, I was going to represent him for free. Then I represented him and told the court that instead of remanding him in prison and allowing him to be part of the thousands of people we have in prison already awaiting trial, why not we all in this court contribute money and have the node like give the money back to the node seller and let him go home happy because at the end of the day the woman wasn't interested in this young man going to prison he was interested in her getting her money back and the court agreed with me right there people started to do, donate 200 naira 500 naira and in no time we contributed almost 10,000 naira the money was handed over to the complainant and the court reprimanded the um, defendant asked him you know like warned him to be careful with his anger management and all of those things and allowed him to go. So stepping out, out of the courtroom, a lot of people were like, thank you, lawyer, thank you, lawyer. I know how Nigerians can be. And I'm like, so if I'm able to really help this person and stop this person from going to prison within five minutes, 10 minutes, I could do a whole lot more for more people who are in prison. Then right there, that day, I told myself it is time to start doing this thing. And I got back to my office. I told my secretary at the time, who was the only staff that I had, that it's time for us to start going to prison. And then our visit was uh, in October of 2018, but the first visit to the prison, Ikoi prison, and we took a lot of cases, about 40 cases of people who are being charged and are waiting trial for minor offenses. In, a, a whole lot of them were even innocent of the crime they were charged for. So we took their cases, I started to represent them. And I didn't even know that I was supposed to, you know, have an organization. So social media helped so after getting the release of one person i'll write this story put it on twitter and on twitter people will be like i love what you're doing how can i be a part of it i want to volunteer to you some say i want to donate to you and i'm like what are they donating to <laughs> i don't have anything ongoing so all of this informed my decision to say oh so i have to have an organization and that was how you know we registered effort foundation in march of 2019 and today that organization now have over 25 full, uh, full-time employees and over 200 volunteers across Nigeria. Um, so Headford Foundation is really not an all-women organization. However, we are about 80% of women because most of our lawyers are women. And the reason for this is not far-fetched. So if you look at our economy in Nigeria, this work, I always say, is not a lucrative job. You really need to be passionate about justice, about, you know, um, social justice. Uh, you really must detest injustice to say, I want to do this job. And at the end of the day, in my own experience over the few years that I've started this work, when we have men on board, they are passionate, they love the job, but it is not fulfilling for them financially. And because of this, they are easy to say, uh, after about six months, they want to leave, all right? But for women, because of the passion, the softness in our heart, a lot of people, you know, find fulfillment doing this job. And that is one thing with our, my team. Um, we are women of passion. We are women resolute and happy doing what we're doing. And I'm able to um, achieve this because it was easy for me to also sell the vision to them. So the moment you want to join Ed Ford Foundation team, the first duty I have is to let you understand why we are doing what we are doing. Poverty is a thing in our country. And I'd say 50% of people in prison are poor. And the reason is because most of the people in prison have been granted bail but they are not able to perfect their bail condition. And when you look at these conditions, some of them are as low as 50,000 naira. Some of them are even as low as 30,000 naira. 
A few days ago, my team were at the Female Correctional Center at Kirikiri, and a young woman has been in prison for about two months now. He's, she's been convicted and sentenced to three months in prison or paid the fine of 30,000 30, naira. She's not able to afford 30,000 naira and because of that she's in prison. So this tells you the level of poverty that is in our land. And that is why it is estimated that 50% of people who are awaiting trial in prison or who are even uh, inmates, whether convicted or awaiting trial, are poor people. No rich person or at least financially comfortable person would prefer to be in any custodial center in Nigeria, you know, because of 30,000 naira. If she or her family members or loved ones are able to raise that 30,000 naira, they would rather pay that money and have the young woman with them at home. So it's, it's, it's a reality that 50% of people who are waiting to try in prison are poor people. So looking at our beneficiaries as of today, I'd say about 10% of them are women. And this is also, the reason is also because when you go to the women um, correctional centers, I'll use Kirikiri as an example. The uh, facility is built for 200 persons and usually it accommodates a little above 200, sometimes 250, 280. Compared to the male prison where you have a capacity built for 800 and is accommodating about over 3,000. So when you look at the congestion rates, um, the men the men suffer these injustices more. And of course, it's, this is not to um, reduce the, the level of pain or hardship that women go through, but it is easier for women to have their families try for them, um, gather money, get a lawyer for them, and ensure that they do not really spend so much time in prison. So for those that we have helped, majority of the 90% of them are, are men, um, while we have a few women who do not have legal representation that we have helped over time. So International Women's Day is a day set aside to first of all celebrate women for their existence and also highlight the challenges that women experience in their workplace, in their family lives, in their personal lives, in their professional lives. Um, also in the community, as a nation, what are the challenges that women face? Highlighting these and helping them uh, go through the struggle uh, uh, successfully. And importantly, investing in women in terms of education, in terms of empowerment, in terms of professional growth. We want to see women sitting on the tables where decisions are being made. And this day is an important day that I, for one, celebrate because uh, over time, um, the opportunities given to women are quite small. And I remember back in the days, my dad would say, as a woman, we ha you have less things to do. So if you don't study hard and you do not have a good grade, you really have less to do. I would say that the coast is kind of enlarging um, re in recent times. And um, thanks, that's thanks to the advocacy from all women organizations and women group that has really um, be, been advocating for women's rights across board. And I'll say that's a good uh, job, but we really still have a lot to do. And a lot to do is continually putting resources in the things that concerns women. When it comes to leadership, we have women who have excelled and gotten to the top of their careers, bringing them on board and having them sit on the table, discuss issues that has to do with the nation, discuss issues that has to do with women. So when issues of women are discussed, let women who experience these things be there to, um, to contribute and actually lead the conversation. Again, my name is Olu Yemi Orija. I am a lawyer and the executive director of Headfort Foundation. I'll say happy International Women's Day, everyone. <laughs>